Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we are looking at a Intec 1200FM SSB 120 channel CB radio that come to me in quite a bad condition as you can see from the pictures the metal work was hanging off and it was generally poor plus the volume and RF gain actual knobs were missing so we've had to do something with that so I've already got the front off and I've already dealt with the front and, t and tidied it up as best as I can and we'll see that in a little bit. So there's the radio without its front on and the case isn't in too bad a condition I suppose. I'm not going to bother stripping all that plastic off it, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So let's have a look inside. And surprisingly, seeing that the front of the radio was in such a poorly and battered condition, the inside of it is not too bad, to be honest. Everything seems to be in order. We seem to have a black wire going off to a switch on the front, which, which is somebody's um, high and low power, so we're going to be removing that, repurposing the switch. So it's got its original VCO in it, original PLL, service date from 1990, none of the usual mods have been done, so we need to do all those, and there's our 1990 label. So let's get this radio up to spec, so that's our noise blanker connection. This comes down to these two points on the board and for the noise blanker to be disabled these wires need to be connected together but they weren't so it's these two points here so I'll put a solder blob across there and that will disable the noise blanker just like that and then we can remove the extra piece of wire this isn't needed Now for the high and low power. I can see a post here with a wire removed. So I'm presuming that's where the other end of the wire goes to the switch and it's just switching in a resistor. So we'll take off the red wire and put that back on its post. because we don't need high and low power to be honest so let's get rid of this extra wire like so we'll tin that back up again because the solder does look a little bit crusty Also, we need the ANL switch. So, with the ANL off, the two wires need to be um, open. So, we can just remove those from the binding posts. So one end's ground, one end goes off to the ANL at the back of the radio, so we can just leave them. Now there's the red wire that was connected to the high and low power. So we've reconnected that, or resoldered that back onto the binding post. That should get our high and low power back on. We've also wired up our switches for our 10kc and 5kc and I've also done all the other mods to the radio as well like bias and what have you I've covered that in previous videos so there's our switches in place so those are the wires for our board that we're going to be using So next thing to come out is the, the VCO 
and we're going to be replacing it with one of my voltage feed VCOs nothing wrong with this VCO but we'll put the volt feed VCO in and out with the PLL chip so here's our volt feed VCO it's just my normal VCO but it's got a voltage regulator built on the board for a nice stable VCO voltage and we connect it to this point on the board which is a feed from the AVR the 9 volts so nice and tidy install looks professional so the board I'm going to be using in this radio is my new microchips mini board now this board has been programmed for 10kc and 5kc only there's no UK 40 on it as this radio is going to be a SSB beast radio basically so I'm not putting UK 40 on it it's just going to basically have 5kc and 10kc with the replacement PLL as you can see nice little neat tidy board fits nicely in the footprint of where the PLL goes so let's do some tests so we're on triple five there down onto zeros very nice onto an alpha channel up 10 kc excellent so the board works just nicely so like i say no uk 40 on this we've fitted plenty of uk 40 mods so the next one is to unlock the clarifier so the clarifier pot out and the unused pin on the clarifier pot needs to be connected to our avr voltage so we know where that is already we also need to remove the resistor which is this one and we need to remove the diode as well and that will enable the clarifier to become a KC shift we're also pulling this resistor out which will help um, SSB audio I believe so there's our KC shift more than enough considering we've got zeros on this so we're getting two or three KC's aside that's more than enough so the next thing is the volume and RF gain now I've tried getting the actual outer controls for these and I've had no luck so unfortunately the pot itself is going to have to come out and be replaced by a single pot And the RF gain is going to be hardwired fully up. So to do that we just need to connect these two wires together. And that's the RF gain disabled. And whilst we're in there we've found a few suspect looking capacitors. So we've had those out as well. And whilst I was aligning it the AM power pop fell apart. So we'll replace that. Don't know why they fall apart. This one, it just disintegrated. So a nice near enough eight watts on FM there. No one is thinking now. Why have I got the 1969 out? Well, we're going to be trying a different RF transistor in this one, which one of the kind people on my Facebook group sent to me this is a HG 2SC1969 supposed to be a direct equivalent not this Chinese fake rubbish that I've been seeing so we're going to try this in this radio so we've got new mounting material for it new thermal, pa uh, new thermal pad so we've mounted it on the heatsink and I'm just doing a continuity check between the transistors collector and the heatsink to make sure we're not touching and we're not touching so that's good we we'll also replace that screw with a metal one because that plastic one seems to break when they feel like it and same power output excellent now I did have to adjust the bias a bit on this 
Oh, two tones looking good. So I've got no reason to suspect that this transistor is not doing what it's supposed to do. So overall quite happy with those. Always nice to find a replacement that works. Now here's the front, the best I could do. So I've sprayed it, rubbed it down, sprayed it on the plastic work. I've straightened out the metal work as best as I could. Glued it back down, giving it a good clean up. And that's how it's looking. So initial SSB tests were good on it. I had to adjust um, the bias, like I say, slightly. But apart from that, everything's working just nicely. Producing good output and nice, nice receive on it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this short video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, join my Facebook group, buy me a coffee, visit my eBay store, join the Patreon, all that stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.